Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Decoding the Unknown. I, as always, am your host Simon. Welcome, welcome. I'm still one of my writers, in this case Kevin. Thank you, Kevin's written me a script. Who is Dr. Gloves? A true internet horror story. Oh god. Normally the internet horror stories are like, oh yeah, there's this video of the dark where someone getting their head chopped off and it turns out that it was just like a mannequin and some like cornstarch blood or whatever. But this sounds true. And Dr. Gloves is a scary- if there was a serial killer called Dr. Gloves, you'd be like, what the That doesn't sound good at all. That sounds like he's- I don't know, up to stuff. <laughs> the format of the show is I've never read this, let's get into it. They say everything has its limits, but I never fully believed that to be true. I saw no limit to the greed of corporate executives, the corruption of politicians, the depravity of 4chan users. The supposed limits that exist in many people appeared to only exist in polite conversation. Thanks to the internet's uncanny ability to put like-minded people together in their own echo chambers where they could speak freely, we learned the extent of people's debaucherous urges and prejudiced ideations, and they seem to know no bounds. Yeah, especially when it's like hidden behind a keyboard, right? It's just like, you don't know. Imagine if you got a Room and it was like, oh, what do you call it? Oh, we're all neo Nazis or whatever in this like forum or whatever. There's like, isn't it like Stormgoers or something? There's that famous one. Like, is that it? Is it full of like Nazis or whatever? And it's like you put them in a room together and be like, oh. <laughs> Not because they get up to Nazi shit, but probably because they'd be a bit embarrassed. They'd be like, oh, no. No, I was a secret Nazi. But it turns out I was wrong. There really might be a limit to everything. While 4chan always seemed happy to host numerous murderers, QAnon, and pictures of every illegal thing imaginable, they eventually met their match. And that is the subject of today's video. Really? Like, this was too much for 4chan? 4chan's like, it's shit. Anything goes. Except for Dr. Gloves, whatever it might be. I'm starting off this episode cheery, but it's gonna go horribly wrong, isn't it? <laughs> Is something so horrific that all of the original posts by the user and subsequent discussions were scrubbed from the internet and its archives. So consider yourselves warned. Oh, Kevin, I got another podcast, dear audience, called The Casual Criminalist, and I sat down to record Decoding the Unknown today because I didn't want to sit down and record an episode of people getting killed. <laughs> and it seems I've stumbled into fucking Dr. Gloves, whoever he is. Today's video is brought to you by one of my more unusual sponsors, and that would be Foreo, the beauty company that decided to sponsor me, who doesn't make beauty videos at all. But look, Foreo wrote to me, and I was like, are you sure you want to sponsor me? Are you sure this is the, the right matchup? And they were like, just let us send you the products and see what you think. And I tried their Foreo bear for like a month, and I was really impressed with it. So I was like, okay, let's do it. But today I'm not talking to you about the bear, I'm talking about the Luna 4. This is a fantastic two-in-one smart facial cleaning and firming device. Both sides work, you see. With the Luna 4, you can enjoy an effortless skincare routine tailored perfectly to your needs. It offers personalized cleansing, app guided firming massages, relaxing T sonic pulsations, and here's the kicker it's incredibly hygienic with ultra hygienic silicone touch points that are 35 times more hygienic than brushes with nylon bristles. And look, I swear, I'm not becoming a beauty influencer, but really, I have from like nasty brushes. <laughs> And like cloths and stuff. I've got spots before, but not with the Luna 4. It's also a perfect gift for your significant other. I got myself these things, but I also made sure Foreo sent some to my wife. She loves it. Right now, you can get 35% off Luna 4, but it's only for the first 100 people. So if you want to treat yourself or surprise someone special, don't miss out on this offer. Check out the link in the description below. And now back to today's video. Most of what remains are the second-hand retellings of exactly how everything went down originally, which means that some of the details might not be 100% accurate, but today is a good day to be listening as a podcast, because the other things that remain are the pictures. I don't know how much our lovely video editor is going to share with our audience, but don't worry, Simon. I'm only going to show you two pictures. Two pictures will be enough. Oh, I don't like it. I just scrolled down and I saw the two pictures, and I don't know what they're of, but it doesn't look good at all in any way, and I'm not happy. There's nothing, like, immediately disturbing about them, but they're the sort of image that you see, and then you're like, oh no. Now I see why it's so immediately disturbing, and there's something weird and blacked out. Oh god. A picture is worth a thousand words. Like so many things. It all started with a post on 4chan. Because the original posts have been deleted, I can't find the exact date on which this all began. All of the evidence seems to point to having taken place sometime in 2017, and I can say for certain that it was uh, no earlier than 2014. There was no text added by the user with this or any of his other posts, and users on 4chan are usually all anonymous, so there are no usernames either. The initial post was just a picture, with many more pictures to come. The man in the image was given the nickname Dr. Gloves because he could be seen wearing a pair of surgical gloves that went right up to his elbows in most of the pictures. The initial pictures appeared to be taken in some sort of hospital morgue. Oh god. Yeah, I'm putting together these pictures now. Is this dude, like, a mortician that's eating people? 
Oh no. It was dirty and gross looking, but that's actually pretty normal. These are areas off limits to patients and visitors, so they don't get the sparkling renovations that main areas of hospitals often will because nobody is going to see it anyway. <laughs> I like, this feels like a very American view. Like, I don't think I've ever been to an American hospital, but I've seen American hospitals in the movies and they all look very nice. Like hospitals elsewhere in the world, they're just like, I, I feel like all of the money is just pumped into the actual healthcare rather than like making the hospitals look nice because the hospitals look bad like if you were an american and you rolled into a european hospital you'd be like what what, what, what? why doesn't it look like a nice hotel <laughs> why is it weird for somebody working in such a location dr gloves attire mostly made sense in addition to the gloves he could be seen wearing either scrubs or a dress shirt and slacks occasionally he would also wear some protective suit thing that would be worn over the clothes to keep them clean the use of surgical gloves instead of exam gloves was a bit odd as they are more expensive and probably not necessary for most of what he should be doing but that wasn't the most questionable part of his outfit dr gloves or a gimp mask oh <laughs> I was looking at this and I'm like, he's wearing a weird balaclava. No, it's a gimp mask. That looks very sweaty, though. That looks very unpleasant. This was obviously to conceal his identity, but it still created a disturbing image. If I was, if I needed to conceal my identity, I wouldn't immediately go, I'm going to get a gimp mask. It'd be like, well, I'm going to get a balaclava, aren't I? Because you can buy a balaclava at Decathlon. To get a gimp mask, well, have you got to go to some website that sells gimp masks and then give them my credit card information, which I'm sure is fine because people are into gimp masks and all that, you know, no shade. You can do what you you do you, but I'm buying a balaclava because I can just go to decathlon and buy one. <laughs> gimp mask is more complicated. No one cared who I was till I put on the mask. Some people still refer to him by the alternative name of Master instead of Dr. Gloves, though that never stuck, which makes sense since it's the sub, not the master, that would be wearing the gimp mask anyway. Oh, thanks for the clarity. Yeah, that does make sense. That makes sense, but thanks for the clarification. So what exactly could Dr. Gloves have been doing in this morgue that required him to conceal his identity, you ask? What else but playing with the corpses? Specifically, he posed and photographed himself while screwing around with and otherwise disrespecting stillborn and miscarried fetuses. Bruh. Through the power of image editing software, someone had been kind enough to cut the bodies out of the images. The two I'm going to show you now are by far the most tame, but I promise you it got much worse. I don't have to tell you this, Simon, but for any curious viewers, I strongly recommend against searching for the unedited images. I accidentally saw one while researching this, and I'll never sleep again. Anyway, enjoy. Yeah, like, my curiosity is to, like, look them up, because I'm like, oh, I really want to know what's behind that thing. But I also really don't, and I'm not going to. One time I accidentally saw, I don't know, I can't even remember how I saw this, but there was, like, it was after a plane crash, with the bodies, like, spread around the place, and I saw this. And I'm like, ah! Ah! And yeah, that image haunts my soul. So don't go looking this up on the internet. It's not a good idea. In the first image, we can see Dr. Gloves holding up a small deceased body by pinching its neck. This is a common theme among these images, with about half a dozen of them featuring bodies being held up with his hands around their throats. The second image is hard to determine from the edited version, but the three objects on the tray are small human brains. Uh, I don't like it! Internet sleuths who apparently have a lot of experience with brains, compared the ones pictured by Dr. Gloves against various non-human animals, but none were the right size and shape. Dr. Gloves had appeared out of nowhere to begin posting these images, and at first people went nuts, but not in the way they should have. While some users were disgusted, many people absolutely loved these images and wanted more. Weirdos, bro. The pictures got re-uploaded to a now defunct site called Death Addicts that was dedicated to images of gore and death, where people also loved them. Users posted all sorts of comments in support of Dr. Gloves, many of whom wanted him to do more. To some of these people, genuine pictures of dead bodies and organs were like porn. I'm sure at least some percentage of these comments were from edgy teenagers who wanted to sound cool but were actually vomiting from the graphic pictures, though sadly, at least some of the contents were real. Yeah, I like to think like almost all of them, the vast majority, are just from like teenage edge lords. The pictures can continue to be posted, with some depicting Dr. Gloves tossing organs into the air and cutting into dead fetuses, but for the most part, it was more of the same. Fans had wanted more, but not more of what they'd already seen. They needed him to take things further, and Dr. Gloves obliged, just not in the way that anybody was expecting. After taking the user's feedback into consideration, subsequent images featured him posing with, not with the corpses, but with live children. The children all appeared to be developmentally challenged, and some may have even been comatose. The new series of pictures show Dr. Gloves placing his gloved hands over their faces and in one instance plugging a child's nose with his fingers and seeming to cover their mouth. 
Most of the children in the images were hooked up to breathing tubes or other medical devices, save for one. There was a girl in pink that was able to walk freely around, and she was the one that Dr. Gloves took the most pictures with. He covered her face with his hand in one picture and grabbed the back of her head and appeared to press it against the wall in another. In possibly the most frightening one, he seemed to be forcing her head into his crotch with one hand while his other hand was behind his back, holding open a plastic container with a set of X-Acto knives that he'd previously used to cut into deceased bo- What? I was not prepared for this, Kevin. I know you warned me in the introduction, but by that point, I'd already set up the camera and sat down. I was not prepared for this. This time, people were not thrilled. Showing off and desecrating dead bodies was one thing, but abusing live children? That was far too much. These gore fans may have enjoyed videos of terrorists executing their enemies or graphic footage of people dying in accidents, but they still had their morals. They also had some of the most creative and evocative insults I've seen, one female user replying that she wanted to get a temporary dick transplant so she could skull this sadistic piece of shit to death. <laughs> temporary dick transplant. <laughs> pretty good. Thanks to these new photo shoots depicting the abuse of disabled children, playtime was over. The gore community now had one singular goal in mind. Dox the shit out of Dr. Gloves. Oh, Dr. Gloves, you've gone too far. Are they... Sure, I feel like they should be able to identify who he is based on the picture here that I'm looking at. It's like... American plugs. So immediately we're in America. That fire hydrant, uh, fire extinguisher, I don't know. I feel like people will get some information from there. 37B written on the wall. I feel like this is enough information to, like, someone else has been in that morgue. Someone else has been through that building. And I feel like this is enough to get him doxxed. Right? Even that one picture. It doesn't take much. It really doesn't. The hunt for Dr. Gloves. Dr. Gloves vanished from the internet after his child abuse photos upset everyone, but people immediately got to work examining the pictures and trying to find any details they could that might pinpoint his location. One of the first pieces of evidence was the presence of electric outlets in some of the pictures. Internet sleuths were easily able to easily identify that the building had to be in either the US or Canada based on the shape of the outlets. So what type of facility were they looking for? Yeah, that was the first thing I went to, to like immediately narrow it down to to US or apparently Canada. They have the weird upset face plugs. The most obvious answer was a hospital, presumably a children's hospital. The images taken in the morgue made this made this pretty clear. Not only did Dr. Gloves have access to bodies, but markings on the wall indicated that it was a reasonably large facility. In the first photo I showed you, the number 37B appears on the wall above the fire extinguisher. The number 37 is often associated with fire codes and fire extinguishers, and 37B likely would have shown up in the map of the facility as the location of one of the extinguishers. Another image showed the numbers 329 with a biohazard symbol. This label was almost certainly obscured in the photo and actually said 3291, the code for medical waste. It was pretty definitive that the morgue was a part of a hospital. All of the children, except the girl in the pink shirt, had been hooked up to medical equipment, so they had been in a hospital setting as well. The only question was whether or not it was the same building. It was possible the Dr. Gloves could have worked at two different facilities. Yeah, but let's start with the idea that he's not. Let's start with the idea that he's working in a hospital with a morgue, because it seems unlike or less likely. It seems like he works in the morgue, and then he's also been like wandering around in the rest of the hospital getting up to some dark shit. So that's where I would begin my investigation. That room also used rocker light switches, those really long switches that basically look like buttons rather than a traditional light switch. This was another detail you wouldn't expect to see in a hospital, nor would you expect to see what looked like a cable jack in the wall. What's a cable jack? <laughs> in the picture, the light switches were visible. It looked like Dr. Gloves was lifting the girl off the ground by the hair. I say that it looks like that in this instance because the floor isn't actually visible. It's possible these pictures may have been taken at, his, taken at his home with his daughter and he was just having her pose with him for pictures. If that was the case, she could have been standing on something for that photo. Given that all of the other pictures are all but confirmed to be authentic, there are only a couple of reasons I would even entertain this as being staged as a possibility. The first is that it seems unlikely Dr. Gloves could have lifted a child off the ground by their hair without her screams alerting anybody. That almost certainly makes it seem like these pictures had to be taken in a private residence rather than the same hospital where the other children were. Seems like a very reasonable assumption. She is also the only child whose face is never visible. Her back is to the camera in every photo except one, and in that one, Dr. Glums's hand is covering her entire face. It's possible that he didn't want her identity to be seen and traced back to him, and that he had just had a pose for some photos to make it seem like he was even more of a sick f than he already was. It's also sadly possible that both things are true, and that he was his daughter in his home, but that the images were of him genuinely abusing her. Bro, no. Let's just say it's not, because I don't like that. So, 
We know that Dr. Gloves had access to both the morgue and to living child patients. This seems to highly suggest that he would have been a doctor. A mortician wouldn't have been seeing living patients, and a nurse wouldn't have been spending enough time alone in the morgue to put on a gimp mask and take all those pictures without being seen. But would a doctor? Wouldn't a doctor just go talk to the mortician? Or the... Who's the person? Is the mortician the person who does the autopsy? I recently started watching quite a good TV show from back in the day called Six Feet Under. I'm just trying, trying to think if, he, if that dude's a mortician, the guy who later plays Dexter. Or whether he's like an undertaker or something, I can't remember. Who's the medical person? Like the medical examiner or whatever who looks at the dead bodies. I feel like that would be his job, and then he'd also sneak out into the rest of the hospital wearing his doctor's coat or whatever, and people wouldn't question him because he's a doctor. They'd, he'd just be like going into the children's room and they'd be like, Oh, what are you doing in here, Bert? <laughs> the mortician. <laughs> Don't know where the name Bert came from. It seemed appropriate for a mortician somehow. And he'd be like, Oh, nothing. <laughs> just, just, just nothing. And they'd be like, Okay, Bert. Have a good weekend. There was also some speculation that Dr. Gloves wasn't medical staff at all, but rather that he was a janitor. Janitors would have, would have access to nearly the entire hospital, including the morgue, and they're generally viewed as being invisible. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're viewed as being invisible unless they're wearing a gimp mask. In that, ca in, in that case, you're like, they're bloody visible because they're wearing a gimp mask. It would explain the use of surgical gloves in nearly all the images. It doesn't make sense to wear surgical gloves when just checking in on a patient who's hooked up to a ventilator or something. But that may also have just been an aesthetic choice. He had worn them in the original pictures and was given the nickname named Dr. Glove, so maybe he felt that the gore addicts wouldn't like him anymore if he switched to more subdued exam gloves. There's a lot more evidence that he was actually a doctor or physician instead of anything else. Aside from his access to both patients and the morgue, there was also his clothing. In some pictures, he was wearing scrubs, but in others, he was wearing a dress shirt and fancy shoes. Wearing dress shirts is common for doctors, but not for pretty much any other members of hospital staff that would have that level of access. People working in billing and stuff would certainly wear dress shirts, but they shouldn't be able to go down to the morgue. So. Dr. Gloves was most likely an actual doctor somewhere in the US or Canada, but where? It seems like it would be difficult to further narrow it down. The gloves worn very common brands used by hospital. The hospital linens appeared that appeared in some of the images were manufactured by Medline, which serves over 10,000 hospitals in the United States. So it seemed like it was going to be a dead end as well. Yes, but this is all very useful information. Like, from one photo, essentially, we've narrowed it down to 10,000 hospitals. Which is a lot of hospitals, obviously, but it's not, like an unsurmountable thing we'll like we'll, we'll narrow it down further it's got to be a hospital that's large enough for this or i suppose small enough for this to be gotten away with it's got to have a children's ward it's got to have a morgue that deals with children is that a different thing a pediatric morgue oh god that's a grim saying isn't it um there's ways to narrow it down like, even if we got down to 5,000 hospitals, then from that, that's still pretty good. However, when looking carefully at the linens used, somebody noticed a rather unusual pattern containing little orange elephants. They decided to search eBay and other resellers for people selling used linens with that pattern, and all the sellers were either in California or Arizona. Boom! We just got it down to two states. Further investigation revealed that Medline's orange elephant blankets were used exclusively by Dignity Health Hospitals in California and Arizona. The search had just been narrowed down from, the mo from most of North America to only 39 hospitals. Boom! Just go look in all of the in the morgue in all of those hospitals and see if the uh, you know that fire extinguishers 37B or whatever it was. Just just go check all of that out. People began focusing more on the details to try and narrow down the exact hospital and Dr. Gloves' true identity. He had particularly hairy arms over which he pulled his size six and a half gloves. This was particularly noteworthy because that's pretty small for a man wearing surgical gloves. Different sources claim different averages, but it seems that either seven or seven and a half is pretty standard for men. A size six and a half would either rip when most tried to put them on or they would cut off their circulation. In addition to the hand size, they used the size of the door frame and other equipment in the morgue to estimate Dr. Gloves' height at between 5'8 and 5'11, but probably on the smaller end of that. Yeah, if he's got small hands, he's probably a smaller man. And 5'11 is a very tall man. As a man of 5'11 myself. It wasn't a lot to go on, but it was something. With only 39 hospitals now, maybe they could make some headway on that front. Yeah, this is 4chan, and they're keen on doxing this guy. There's gonna be lots of people there's only 30, 40 hospitals basically so just find people near to each of those hospitals you could easily knock 20 off right surely there's going to be 20 people who are just like yeah i'll just go down to the like, hospital and wander into the morgue <laughs> do you think you could do that or like mate this it, how many people are on 4chan it's big maybe there's even people who work at the hospitals to go check it out i guess there's like swipe cards and stuff you can't just go wander into a morgue but you could look through the window or something couldn't you I guess morgues maybe don't have windows because that'd be creepy. 
Who knows? Research was done into what facilities each of the hospitals had. Not all of them would have had long-term care facilities for disabled children, which narrows it down quite a bit. Allegedly, internet investigators even tracked down the blueprints of the hospitals to see what would match little of the what little of the building's layout was available in the images. This may or may not be possible, as most blueprints are considered public record, but not all of them, and it varies by jurisdiction. Well, we just need the jurisdiction of California and Arizona. What do they have? They may have just been using a simple floor plan or directory of the hospitals that people could use as a map, a you are here sort of thing to find where you need to go. Unfortunately, since all the original discourse is gone, there's no way to know which it was. In either case, they were able to use these maps to narrow the hospital down to Glendale Memorial Health Foundation, a hospital run by Dignity Health in Glendale, California. They were certain they'd found the right hospital. Now all those meddling kids needed to do was pull the gimp mask off their villain. That's incredible. Are they really going to be able to do that? I know I said I was only going to show you two images, but here's more, one more that we need to discuss. Don't worry, I edited it so that not even the outline of a body will be visible because that's not what I need you to look at. I want to draw your attention to the computer in the background of this picture. Okay. It's very blue. The laptop is an HP Stream Professional laptop. It was released in 2014, which tells us that these were definitely new photos being taken and uploaded at the time, rather than old horror photos from the 80s or something. While it was a fairly common laptop, that didn't do anything to narrow down exactly what hospital this was. But it was still strong evidence that, well, wait a minute, was Dr. Gloves wearing a f***ing photo ID? Dude, he is. <laughs> what? Yes, yes he was. The man that had gone through the trouble of wearing a gimp mask to conceal his identity uploaded a photo of himself wearing his ID badge from the hospital. The layout on the badge matched up with the style of those used at the hospital they suspected. The name on the ID read Edwin Balians which people felt also makes sense. Balians is an Armenian name, and Glendale has a large Armenian community. Based on Dr. Gloves' skin tone and extreme hairiness, they believed he was quite, it was quite likely that he was in fact Armenian. As for the S at the end of Balians, we can probably chalk that up to Ellis Island doing Ellis Island things. It didn't take long for internet investigators to find out that there was in fact an Edwin, Edwin Balians living in Glendale, and they posted his name, address, and phone number online. People began staking out the hospital and believed they'd identified his car. While it seemed like everything was coming to a head, everyone recognized that they shouldn't jump the gun. Wow, good for you, because it seems like you've locked this down! He wore an ID! What if the name tag appearing in the photo was deliberate? None of the pictures had shown Dr. Gloves' face, so who was to say that it was really him on the ID badge? There had already been some speculation that Dr. Gloves was in fact two people rather than one, and the idea was put out there that this photo was posted as a way for one of the people involved to turn on the other one. Alternatively, it could have been that somebody at the hospital setting up a hated co-worker in the most vile and despicable way possible. Of course, it really could have been his actual name tag as well. Even the most cautious criminals have a tendency to get caught by making really stupid mistakes. Nobody could agree on whether or not that was really Dr. Gloves' name, and there was no way to be sure. But at the same time, all of the people that had been investigating this case knew that they couldn't just sit back and do nothing. This is fine. As much as everybody wanted to jump Edvin and beat the shit out of him or worse, cooler heads were able to prevail. That may have been the name on the hospital ID, but that didn't mean he was actually their guy. Instead of taking the law into their own hands, it was decided to put the law into the law's hands. That may have been a mistake. Numerous people, a cross 4chan and death addict, claimed to have reported the incident along with all of the collected evidence to the FBI. Allegedly, many of these people showed proof of their reports, but again, this is all lost to time, so I can't be sure. Of course, I find it hard to believe that so many people would claim to report something like this to the authorities, but that not a single one would have actually done anything. Unfortunately, it seems that the FBI decided to not do anything. According to all of the accounts, the FBI's response was that posting the photos was immoral, but nothing included was actually illegal. There was nothing they could do. Everyone was understood understandably outraged, of course, as there were crimes being committed, right? At the very least, people believe Dr. Gloves to have been guilty of abuse of a corpse under California law. The law states that no person shall treat a human corpse in a way that would outrage reasonable community sensibilities. That's a state law, so the FBI couldn't handle it anyway, but surely they'd pass it on to the state police. Or they would have. If it weren't for the words that everyone seemed to ignore and I previously concealed with an ellipsis, the full text actually reads, no person except as authorized by law. Hmm. Because he's allowed to do this, because he's a mortician. If Dr. Gloves was in fact a doctor who had every right to be in the morgue with the bodies, then sadly, he had the right to treat a corpse in a way that would outrage your sensibilities. Well, no, he doesn't, because he's a mortician. It's like doing an autopsy and taking someone's heart out. Like, removing someone's heart is like against my sensibilities if your name is John and you run the corner shop. If your name is, you know, Peter and you're a mortician, 
then it's like no it's not against my sensibilities because you're weighing the heart or whatever to find out what killed someone that's not against sensibilities but then if you're playing with the heart yes it is against sensibilities i already touched upon some of the details with the pictures of the girl in the pink shirt and the possibility that they could have just been staged photos that his daughter took with him still weird still highly inappropriate and still disgusting but it also wouldn't have been illegal really that also that just leaves the other pictures of the disabled and comatose children and i can't see any other another side to these ones dr gloves appeared to very clearly be depriving those children of air they may not have died but there's no way that wouldn't be abuse either this man was an absolute god of forced perspective or something in those pictures had to constitute a crime but allegedly the fbi disagreed what the fuck fbi you're the you're the ones who always come to the rescue it's like our oh, state police did nothing and they're just incompetent the fbi roll around and it's like oh shit's gonna get real and not today which is disappointing wrap up so who is dr gloves was it really edmund balians sadly the bo answer to both of those questions is we have absolutely no idea after people claimed that everything had been sent to the fbi and the answer came back that there was no crime being committed all investigations seemed to dissipate even though it is believed that the hospital was identified nothing has come from it no arrest was ever made involving anyone that took place in the story of course there is one minor caveat allegedly the fbi said that there was nothing illegal in the images but the fbi says a lot of things if they really did tell the people who reported the details of the case that there was nothing they could do they could very well have been lying the police are known to do that if the fbi felt that there could be a crime but they needed more evidence they wouldn't do anything to compromise their investigation you know like telling a bunch of loudmouths on the internet that they were investigating this person the internet sleuths had already scared dr gloves into hiding by vocally attempting to dox him and the last thing the fbi would need is for those people to reveal the existence of a criminal investigation into his activities maybe that's wishful thinking on my part but it does sort of make sense well it would make sense if this story ends with like yeah a year later after gathering evidence they raided the shit out of his morgue and now he's in prison um but i get the feeling because we've only got like three paragraphs left that that's not the case the original discussions on both 4chan and death addict are gone there were new threads made on both sites but in both cases it appears to have been a year later at least the discord server to discuss the case is also long gone same thing with the google doc containing all the combined research and evidence i could barely find links to any of these things in the first place but everything they lead to has been deleted and it's not like google docs expire or anything someone actively took it down all that exists now is second-hand accounts and screenshots of screenshots it's possible that the fbi instructed all of those sites to remove everything about dr gloves so they could investigate him without everyone like everyone else making so much noise and yes technically that's possible though i'm hesitant to say it's likely it's been over five years since all of this happened and it's not like they were trying to bring down a giant criminal conspiracy this investigation realistically shouldn't have taken that long unfortunately we may never know the truth we have no idea if Balians is Dr. Gloves. If he is, we have no information on what happened to him. Even if it wasn't illegal, did he at least lose his job? It's hard to imagine any hospital would continue to employ the person that uploaded those pictures. And if the name tag was a red herring, we may never know the culprit's real identity. As far as I can tell, nobody ever faced any repercussions over this and likely never will. The leads have all been taken as far as they can be, and if authorities are unwilling or unable to do anything about it, then there's not really anything that the rest of us can do at least not anything that wouldn't land us in jail yeah okay well that's a disappointing ending isn't it thanks for being here leave a review if you enjoy the show if you're watching on youtube like and subscribe and i'll see you next time